the 2023 Nissan Z is here. I can confirm that it's real and guess what? I touched it. We can't wait to get behind the wheel, whip it around a track and put it through our full Edmunds evaluation. But before we do all that, can we just bask in it for a second? We came this close to not getting another two-seat sports car from Nissan to carry on the legendary lineage that began with the 240Z and the 300ZX, and more recently, the 350Z and 370Z. But now, the Z is here. That's it, the name is just Z, and it's arriving in the spring of 2022. While I take a second to get acquainted with this thing, why don't you go ahead and click like below and hit subscribe so you can see more behind the scenes sneak peeks just like this one. And hey, if you're thinking about selling your car, go to edmunds.com slash sell my car to get a cash offer right now. It literally works super fast. So just give it a try. Now we are not driving it today, so stay tuned for that. But here's what we do know. Rear wheel drive, check. 400 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque, check. Six speed manual transmission, check. Or nine speed automatic transmission, half check. Under the hood is the same three liter twin turbo V6 engine in the Infiniti Q50 Red Sport. Now we tested that car from zero to 60 miles per hour in five seconds flat. And in the lighter, sportier Z, we expect the engine to be even quicker. But more importantly, we think it will probably be a little bit more smooth and easy to live with than the previous naturally aspirated V6 in the 370Z. Here's more of the important stuff. There are two models to choose from, the Z Sport and the Z Performance. Now, the Z Sport is the base model, and that comes with LED headlights, cloth seats that are manually adjustable, and an eight inch touchscreen. You also get 18 inch wheels on Yokohama tires. And the Z Sport is going to start around $40,000. Now, when it comes to the Z Performance trim, you get a bunch of extra equipment, both comfort wise, like seats that are leather, heated, and power adjustable, and performance wise, like bigger brakes, a rear spoiler, and a mechanical limited slip differential that we were just begging for in the previous 370Z. That's gonna help you with grip when you need it the most. You also get 19 inch wheels from Rays wrapped in Bridgestone tires. Now, we don't know the price for the Z Performance yet, but considering all of the extra equipment, we're thinking somewhere in the high 40,000s to maybe even $50,000 range. Any takers so far? Okay, let's keep going. When you get up close to the Z, you can see that it has a pretty interesting shape for a modern car. A lot of its mass is hanging right over the middle of it. It's got a pretty short hood, and then that roof line rakes really hard and ends right at the trunk lip. Now, obviously this is meant to evoke some of that classic Z styling, but there are also modern elements to help the design language kind of forge ahead. For instance, there's this squatness to it that looks like it's really hugging the ground, and there are flat horizontal elements that are most noticeable at the front and at the rear with this tail bar all the way across. Plus, there are some playful elements too, you know, make it not too serious, like this interesting door handle cutout. I like that quite a bit. But what does it all really mean? Well, in terms of overall dimensions, the Z is much smaller than a Ford Mustang, but about the same size as a Toyota Supra. So let's start there. The Z and the Supra have almost exactly the same length from nose to tail, but the Z actually has three extra inches of wheelbase. That means you'll have shorter overhangs at the front and the rear. Plus, the extra space between the front wheels and the rear wheels could be a big help for ride comfort, 
Now, we'll have to get it on the road to test that out. And if it's better than the Supra in that area, that would be great because we didn't think the Supra did all that well when it comes to comfort on the road. The width of the Z is again very similar to the Supra. And when it comes to height, the Z has about an inch or so on it. I think the main takeaway from that is that with the Z, you're basically getting the same size as the Supra. You're just getting an extra three inches of wheelbase. Although one area we're a little curious to find out about is the cargo space. We haven't gotten measurements for that yet, but just looking at it, I think you should probably plan to pack light. Anyway, let's check out the rest of it. Once you drop into the seats, and you do need to drop in because this thing's pretty close to the ground, you can fully take in the Z interior. Now, I got really excited when the first photos came out because I saw that all blue interior and it looked sweet on the screen. And they actually brought one out, and here it is. It's super blue, and it is super sweet. So I was right. But regardless of the interior color, I'm impressed by what Nissan has done here. Some recent Nissan models have come out that look kind of childish or toy-like on the inside, and I'm not getting that vibe here at all. Moving on, you have nice flat lines throughout the cabin, which is continuing the motif from the exterior. Everything in here just feels a little bit polished, you know, grown up. I also like these leather panels with accent stitching and how all the controls and dials are easily within reach. Plus, you get these dash top gauges that are pointed right at the driver. It makes me feel important, you know? Now, I'm not normally a big fan of the glossy piano black, but there's a nice limited use of it here on the steering wheel. That looks pretty good. All Zs come with a 12.3 inch driver information display right in front of the seat. And you get standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, if your Z is a performance model, you get wireless Apple CarPlay, plus navigation and a Wi-Fi hotspot. The stereo is also upgraded on performance models from a six speaker system to a Bose eight speaker system. If your performance is an automatic, you get larger paddle shifters on the steering wheel. And if it's a manual like this one, you get rev matching to automatically blip that throttle on downshifts. On this nine inch screen, I like that the buttons are within reach, but it doesn't feel like the most logical button layout. And on the home screen, the screen buttons do the exact same thing as the physical buttons. Maybe that won't bother you, but it's just irking me a little bit. One other thing is that sometimes when you angle a screen up like this, it tends to catch glare from the sunlight and kind of wash it out. Just something to note for testing later when we do get it on the open road, and maybe it'll be fine. It's maybe providing enough shade for it, but I'm not super optimistic about it. Overall, I would classify this as Miata style minimalism. Keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things with heavy materials that are just gonna weigh the car down. I feel like I should put on a scorpion jacket and like scream through the hills above LA with some heavy 80 synths playing in the background. This car is practically made of vibes. Now, on the other hand, you could say that the Z interior comes off a little bit cheap and you would get no argument from me. There are still hints in here on Nissan's insistence on being youthful to a fault. <laughs> For instance, why are we doing these giant oval cutouts? Uh, I get that we're trying to bring some of the past forward, but some things should probably just be left in the past. That's not vibes, bro. So as of right now, that's what we know. Nissan has given us a modern Z that is heavy with the retro aesthetic right now, and I dig it but you have to be a little bit careful with that. After all, the Z shares some of its internal structure with the old 370Z, and that thing was around for 11 years. Sure, it's been upgraded and retrofitted and all of that, but you want people calling the design retro, not the frame. It is perfectly natural to be a little bit skeptical on whether the Z can really deliver what people want from a modern sports car in the $40,000 range. I mean, we saw what you guys said about the Supra. Sheesh. 
This is a cutthroat segment, but it's because there is so much enthusiasm and culture around affordable sports cars. And you can see that in the way that owners feel about their 350Zs and 370Zs right now. This car means a lot to a lot of people. And after our short introduction today, I think that the new Z hits a lot of the right notes. But there are still some questions left to be answered. Keep it locked right here so you can see our review when we finally get to start it up. 